I'm going to do a screencast on how to use seaplanes in Rhino. Uh, it's something I've been struggling with a lot. I'm still learning how to use them, but I want to show you some of the basic seaplane tools because it'll help you a lot as you're navigating and building some complex surfaces. So I'm going to start with something that I've built before. Uh, we'll go build three. And I'm going to show you how to deal with seaplanes uh, as you're navigating, trying to create some geometries. I'm going to start by cleaning this up a little bit. You can see I was playing around with some spotlighting and some rendering. So I'll go ahead and uh, delete this spotlight out of here and go back to shaded view. Okay, so when we created this surface right here with the U-shape cut out of it, we had to go in and, and actually draw on that surface. And since I've created the video showing how to do that, I learned some other ways to actually move the seaplanes around. So I'm going to show you some of that. Uh, again, you want to make sure that in Preferences and Themes, you have Rhino for Windows selected. That will show you all of these different tabs up here, which I use to navigate. All that stuff exists in the Mac theme. I just don't know where to find it. So I'm using Rhino for Windows theme. Also, as you probably just heard, you'll occasionally hear my son Jack giggling in the background. He's watching Big Hero 6 right now as I'm recording these, and he really likes that movie. So I'm going to go to seaplanes, and I'm going to explore some of these options. Now the default seaplanes for each view, for top, front, and right, are named. So if I want to work <coughs> uh, on the bottom, the bottom floor here, which actually counterintuitively uh, is called the top seaplane, then I would go to top, and I want to make sure that it's actually select selected as seaplane world top. And it is. I'm just going to show you how to reset these if they got messed up by chance. Uh, you'll also notice the perspective view shares the same seaplane as the top view. When you start, you can make changes to that um, along the way. You can create independent seaplanes for each of these views, which I think is really important. You're not just creating a single seaplane. So I can go in and change the perspective one. It's actually set world top right now, but I can make some changes. So one of the ones we've explored before is set seaplane to object. So if I click on that and click on an object, it's just going to move my seaplane. Now, as far as I can tell with object, it's trying to be helpful. It's trying to both pick the object and then the side of the object, like the surface that you've clicked on. So if I were to go backwards, um, which you can't actually undo those seaplanes with undo, so I need to go back and do set seaplane world top. If I did set seaplane to object again, but chose a different side, it should shift that to that side of that object. So if you're dealing with flat planes and some 90 degree angles, set seaplane to object is actually really helpful. And what's nice about this is if I'm working in that view with that seaplane and I want to draw some geometry, and let's say I'll do a circle instead of a line, I want to draw some geometry, as long as my O snaps, that's these down here on the left. As long as they're not selecting any other pieces, like picking up intersections and things like that, the geometry will stay on the, that construction plane, right? You can see that that circle lives on that construction plane that I created. Now you'll see if I start drawing another circle and I have some of these O snaps on, if I pick like, oh, I want it to intersect with that, it's kind of jumping around. You can actually see in some of these other views here in the top view and the front view, that it's actually jumping around back and forward away from that seaplane. So one way, if you have your O snaps turned on and you're middle of a drawing and it's snapping to the wrong things, you can hold down Option and it will temporarily turn off, will temporarily disable those things. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create this and let go. But you'll notice that this circle actually was created not on the seaplane. Do you know why that was? Well, it had to do with when I turned the O snaps on. I actually created a circle, and the first point I clicked down had already snapped to something. So if I don't want it to snap to anything, I just want it to go on the C plane, then I need to hold Option to turn off all of my O snaps before I start drawing. So now that those O snaps are off and I start drawing, it should create it on that C plane. Okay, so that's very important to know what, how to set C planes and how to know if the objects you're creating, the geometries you're creating, are going to stay on that seaplane. All right, so let me go ahead and delete some of these things. Don't want them anymore. All right, so let me go ahead and go back to perspective view and reset world top. Um, there are other things we can do. Like one of the common ones was shifting a seaplane vertically. 
So maybe I know that I want to move it up exactly 0.75. So I can go to the view I want. I can go set Z. So it's, uh, I think this one's called set C plane elevation and decide how high I want to move it. Now, it will let you click and drag, right? So again, with your O snaps, you can say, I want it to come exactly to right there, as long as you have the right O snaps on. It looks like mine are turned off right now. So I hit option to turn them back on. Boom. So that would allow me to move that C plane to just that right place. Okay. You can also, um, let me get that circle out of there. If I set that back to world top, you can also use this and directly type in. So I want to move this down 20 units. So I'll type negative 20 and that will shift. <clears throat> oh, you see, I was actually on the right view. So it moved it down the right view. I meant to do it on the perspective view, but you still see the idea. Let me go ahead and reset the right views, the right view port. <laughs> I'm still learning all these names back to the appropriate C plane or the default C plane. So right, I think it's this one set C plane world, right? So that should set it back to the way that it was. Okay. Uh, another couple useful things you can do with C plane. So I'm going to reset the perspective view back to world top. That's how it was when I start every file. Those are the default settings. Um, I'm going to go back to set C plane to object and I'm just going to select this object and you'll notice it's right on that surface, which is awesome. But it's also putting the origin, this point zero zero right here in the middle of my object. And sometimes like you can see with these outer parts of these geometries right here, that doesn't line up with the grid very nicely. Okay. And I'm actually not even sure with this perspective view if it's lining up right or not. It looks like it might be. Sometimes when I move my C planes using set C plane world object, I want to actually shift the origin. So I found this one to be really helpful. I believe it is mm, this one. Yeah, set C plane origin. So now I've moved my C plane. It's in the right place in terms of like it's toward the front of the object where I want it but I want to take zero, zero and move it down to this corner right here because I've set up my grid to make it easier to count. I'm going to go set C plane origin and hopefully with the right O snaps, I can select the appropriate point and all it's going to do, it's not going to move it forward in the object or backward in the object. It's just going to shift it left and right and up and down to recenter that origin. So the origin now is right on this intersection point right there. So those are some things we can do with C planes. Hopefully this is helpful. Being able to navigate your workspace and control where you're creating geometries uh, will really be helpful as you go forward.